Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts. And today we're going to pick up where we left off and we're going to finish setting up our uh, environment so it's ready to use all of the features uh, in Omega 4. And so now we're going to start off in the uh, theme directory for our current working theme. So if you do a um, in terminal in your command line, if you do ls, you should be seeing uh, all this stuff that's in your base theme. So your SAS folder, your CSS folder, all of this stuff, right? So typically the work process is, is that you would come into this folder and then you'd run the command drush and then space omega hyphen guard, just like that, and then enter. And it's gonna ask you which theme you wanna run guard for. Um, so we're going to hit one because that's our theme that we're using, the level up Omega. And it's going to give you an error. Well, it's not going to give you an error usually, but this particular time it's going to give you an error because we don't have the gems that we need. And if you recall, if you look at your sublime text folder, we have this gem file and this lists a whole bunch of stuff, including SAS. Uh, assess globbing, compass, compass validator, compass normalize, uh, Suzy, singularity, a whole bunch of these gems. And these gems are essentially little programs that run in Ruby that help us do things, right? Like SAS is going to compile your SAS into CSS. SAS globbing, uh, what that does is it looks into folders and finds any single partial file and compiles it into a SAS file, which compiles it into your CSS which might not uh, abstractly make a lot of sense, but when you see it in action, you'll realize how excellent it is. Um, and so we, of course, need these gems before we can really do anything. And that's exactly what this command is telling us here. It's saying, install missing gems with bundle install. And keep in mind, you, have to, you might have to run these with sudo, depending on your access. And so I'm gonna run sudo bundle install and of course ask me for my password, I'm gonna enter it, and it should be getting the, uh, the gems that we need. Okay, and after a couple minutes, uh, or depending on how many of these you already have, it's going to go and install every single thing that's in our gem file with whatever version is either specified or the latest version. Uh, since there's no version specified for most of these, it's not going to really uh, be version specific, so we'll grab the latest ones. So let's come back to our command line, and it says bundles complete. So now we should be ready to go. It's installed the gems, it's in, we have Ruby installed, we have RVM installed, we have our command line tools installed. Pretty much everything's leading up to this point where we can now, once again, type in drush omega guard, pick our theme that we're going to be using, and it's going to tell us that it's watching our files. So compilation, it says took 2.95 seconds and it's watching our files. Live reload is waiting for your browser to connect and guard is now watching at sites all themes level up Omega. So to prove to you that this is doing something of importance, let's go to Sublime Text and let's go to our SAS folder and then inside of here, we're just going to go to styles.css. And you see all these import statements. We're gonna go over exactly what all of these imports are doing in the next video. But for now, let's just type body and then inside of our uh, CSS statement here, we can say, uh, let's do background. And then once again, actually let's use something different than we used before. Let's just say background red. Now, if we come back to our terminal, you can see that Omega hacks has remained unchanged. Uh, no query has actually been overwritten and normalize is identical. And level up omega.styles.css has been overwritten. And so this is because it's detected that we saved our SAS file. And whenever we save our SAS files, any of our SAS files, guard is going to update. So once again, let's save this file without making any changes. We save it, let's come back to guard, and you'll see that there 
uh, identical now. It doesn't say they've overwritten. They're just identical, so it's not going to do anything. And it's going to say it's going to be reloading the browser. I don't know if we have live reload checked, but we're going to go over how to do that too as well. So what does this mean? Let's come to our CSS folder here. And if you recall, before we'd actually hand typed uh, background blue. And now if we come here, you can see that it's added some debugging information, which of which you can just ignore. It's not going to affect the output of these styles. In fact, we can even turn that off in later tutorials. I'll show you how to put this into production mode so it's going to uh, minify this CSS. But uh, for now, you'll see that this body background is red. As well as if we come to our actual page and I refresh, the body background's red. Now let's come back to our SAS file. And let's just change it to green just for fun. Come back to our page and we can uh, actually it looks like live reload is on and you can see that without even refreshing the page it just turned this to green. And once more for fun uh, we can do purple save and now I'm just gonna wait a second while this compiles and then it just automatically turns it to purple without me uh, doing anything. And it's live reloading because I have that box checked. Also, I should I should mention that uh, if you have inspect element open in Chrome, it could crash your browser, um, or at least crash that tab. So if you're using live reload uh, on Chrome, just make sure your inspect element isn't open. Otherwise, just use Safari uh, because their inspect tools are pretty similar. It may have seemed difficult, it may have seemed out there, but now we're in a workflow that is going to be totally normal. And in fact, if you've noticed when I typed this SAS code, it's really just CSS. In fact, this looks the exact same as if we were to type the CSS. The only thing that's different is we have these funky import statements and we have some interesting things we can do. Um, in fact, uh, things get really interesting and really fun um, to ways that you're gonna be working on things if you've never used some of these tools and it's going to feel just so intuitive and just uh, just really nice and easy. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video. Hit us up at Twitter at Level Up Tuts. Let us know what you're thinking. We'd love to hear from you. In the next video, we're going to talk about the structure of the SAS code in this project and how you should be modifying and writing your styles. And then from there, we're going to talk about some of the extensions that come, and then we're going to get into the grid framework, which is extremely powerful, but at the same time, not hard to wrap your brain around. So thanks for watching. Keep watching. We're going to have lots more videos, more this week, lots of stuff. So as always, this is Scott Talinsky with Level Up Tuts. Thanks for watching. Bye.